Carl, when we were on the phone the other day, you told me you'd lost money in this coronavirus recession and sell-off. And I thought to myself, how's that possible? This is Carl Icahn, but not everybody is uh, completely infallible. Tell me what's been going on with you, with your portfolio over the past seven to eight weeks. Yeah, well, we, we keep it pretty well hedged. And, um, <clears throat> but but uh, even the hedges uh, couldn't, uh, couldn't uh, stop us from losing some money, but we still have quite a bit, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not crying about it. And we have, as, as I've always kept, a large amount of, uh, of cash or cash equivalents uh, for, for a stormy day. So I, I think uh, there's going to be very interesting times ahead. And while you have to be extremely careful in this market, and we could discuss that, I, I think there will be also some good opportunities. But I, I can't talk about it short term. I, you know, in the short term, I think you may have some big downdrafts. So that's where I am with that. You've um, given me a couple of provocative openings there. Let's start with the last one, big downdrafts. Do you think, Carl, that we've seen the bottom put in on March the 23rd, or could we test or possibly even go through those lows? Well, you know, if, if you could tell me <laughs> what the virus is going to do, you know, when, when people start going back out, uh, and, and I tell you that uh, I don't think it's going to be as as good as some people think. I, you mean the recovery? The, uh, yeah. Well, the optimism, the optimism uh, that you know, you, it's not like turning on a spigot. So I think uh, you, uh, you you may see recurrence of that virus. Uh, uh, you know, I uh, several years ago I uh, donated the hospital, or at least I gave enough money to have my name on it. It's an icon. Uh, Medical school at Mount Sinai, so I, I have the honor of being able to. Uh, I, I don't I don't micromanage it at all, but you know, speaking to some of the really smartest guys in, in this area, and there is concern that uh, it's not going to be, you know, just let's go out and let's go have fun. I I think uh, this virus is the most uh, contagious contagious one that I think they've ever seen. Uh, uh, to, to give you a comparison, the, uh, in SARS, one person would infect 1.2 people. Here you infect five people because you infect people even if you're asymptomatic. So, I mean, I'm not going to get into that. That's not what you need me on for. it. But uh, I, I don't well, think it's I, – I think this thing is going to be in spurts. But I do think eventually it's a great country. And uh, – you know, with, with with a lot of different misgivings, I have. Uh, I think that you you will see some great opportunities ahead. But mostly, I think, rather than in these uh, in these technology stocks and high multiple stocks, I think they're going to be more in the um, uh, in the Graham and Dodd type stocks. The real you know, economy, I look at risk so to reward speak. And, and yeah, so that's so, basically it. Carl, given what you've just said which I wouldn't call pessimistic, I would call cautious maybe, careful. Yeah. You look at the S&P yeah. 500 right now. The S&P 500 is at 28.25. And if you, you know, look at what that's based on, it suggests a 17 times multiple on earnings of $165 next year. Does any of that make sense to you? Given the uncertainty around the outlook, can anybody possibly forecast what earnings are going to be? And even if you could, is 17 times the right multiple? No, I, I, I agree with you. I, I think there, you, you could not really justify that multiple at this time in many of the companies. I mean, these technology companies that have these great multiples, I, I think the, the, real, the real problem there is that, uh, you know, that a lot of that, I think, in many businesses is not needed as much as they sell you. I mean, I mean, you know, we have this company, Hertz, and I'm not going to go into that. We're on the board and all. But, you know, we spend over a billion dollars, not us, but before we got in there. You know, management just goes in 
and you spend over a billion dollars, and we really don't get that much for it. I, I mean, it used to be at home. So take, take your home. You used to go and you put the light, you, you had a switch. You put the light on, you turn it off, it was nice. And sometimes, okay, it was great because you could maybe make the light less bright or more bright. Now you have all these scenes they put in and all that stuff. So that's just a microcosm of, of what these uh, tech companies uh, sell you. Now you do need the cloud and, and all that. But I really think that all that stuff and all that software and all those software companies, I mean, the, the multiples they have, I don't believe are justified. But that's me, you know. Hey, look, I've... Uh, are you short, Carl? Are you uh, short my, Amazon my biggest, or are you, yeah. short, are you short Netflix, yeah, no, I'm for example? Not, I'm not... I, I, I really not sure at Amazon or or, uh, or those, uh, but but I you know I have a hedge on with the S and P and what have you, but my actually my biggest position, Eric, my biggest position today, is a short sale in a way, and that's in the CMBX sixes, where, uh, I mean you know I look at risk reward, and I, I never, and and I, I I started shorting this last summer way before the. Uh, the virus. You're, you're uh, just came to be on. clear, just to be clear, what we're talking about, you have a short position on the CMBX, which is an index of commercial real estate debt. I got that straight. Exactly. Correct? Okay, and you're using. Yes, you got And the way to short it, that, if I understand yeah. it correctly, is to use a credit default swap. Yeah, so it gets it gets real complicated, but basically, uh, you know, the, these uh, people that invest in funds. I, I, it's, it's almost 08 all over again, you know. It's all the, it's the little guy and the people that just come in and they get sold a bill of goods. And uh, it's, it's sort of a sad commentary. And, you know, hey, look, I'm in the business to make money, and I don't deny that. But it sort of outrages you to see some of the uh, stuff that, that they're selling. Now, in, in this one, you, it's, the CMBX and, and the, the, the funds that have the biggest position in it, Hey, look, and they, they know I'm short, and they, they wrote about me, so I can write about I can tell you it's uh, Putnam and Alliance Bernstein have these very large positions, and they put people in them, and what they really are, what they really are doing, are selling, these people are really selling insurance. They've sold you an insurance policy, malls, in other words. On, yeah, they're, they're really selling. I don't think the people understand it. I mean, the, these derivatives are... Uh, uh, a, a Ph.D. in business wouldn't understand what these derivatives are, are, are telling you and what they're doing. But um, we're on the other side of it. In other words, we buy the insurance. And, and um, Putnam and Alliance Bernstein, for instance, tell their investors that their investments should, they, you know, I'm sort of quoting them, should be compared to treasuries, meaning that they're very safe, right? But, this is, it's, but it's completely uh, misleading. It's, it's uh, disingenuous. Uh, a good part of their investments are in these complex derivatives. I mean, it would take a PhD to decipher them. And basically, these derivatives, like we said, are insurance policies on triple Bs and double B bonds that are in that CBM and BX index. Now, I, you know, to explain it would be hard to do, but, so, but, but, but it's just simply what happened to AIG in 08. So these small investors are putting money into these funds. And, and by the way, they pay Putnam uh, 4% just to get into the fund. And, and, and what's happening is they, they could lose. And people, they don't understand that they could lose 80 to 100% of their money when they put money into that Putnam, into those uh, diversified funds. So, so and, just to um, get this straight, they've bought in to these. You say that Putnam and Alliance Bernstein sold retail investors, the little guys, so to speak, a yieldy vehicle offering them some high mid, you know, mid single digit yield, six, seven percent, better than treasuries, better than corporate bonds, maybe. And they could stand to lose a lot of money if the commercial real estate market falls apart and it is falling apart. So I've seen yeah, the indexes. So, so I've this, seen yeah, I've seen yeah. where they're trading. I know that the CMBX triple B is down to 65 or 67 cents and the double B is down into the 40s. That suggests to me, Carl, given that you said you bought in you, 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 you put this trade on last summer, you made a lot of money. Yeah, we, we're, doing, we're doing quite well in it. I, I mean, and uh, we... we uh, what, what does quite well mean? Well, we, we started in the summer, but we added to it. But, but uh, I mean, it was a ridiculous trade in the summertime because you're taking this an ordinary risk. For, for, and, and it's the same damn thing as always. We are, 
Actually, but uh, no aid, at least AIG should have been cognizant of the risk they were taking. Here they're putting people into it. And so, you know, it, it bothers you that uh, it really, it, it sounds corny, but you get outraged by, by what they write. <laughs> you know, they tell everybody, oh, it's, it's, a, it, it's similar to Treasury bonds, or it's, you compare us to Treasuries. So, in other words, you get the guy who say, well, look, I could get you 6%. Carl. It's complicated. It's three percent, and then it is so complicated that it's return. probably not worth hey, getting in. It, it's probably not worth getting into too much more of the mechanics. But I would like to know, if you don't mind, can you give us a sense of how big this position is and how much you've made on it over the course of holding it and adding to it over that period? Yeah. Look, I, I'm not going to get into. We, we have billions and billions of dollars on the short side of this. Uh, uh, you, you know, because. It really is a beautiful trade on a risk-reward basis. I, I was brought up in the old Graham Dodd philosophy, and, uh, I, I, you know, you look at risk-reward. That's what I look at. You look at risk-reward, and that's what, as, as you pointed out before, Eric, the risk-reward in this market isn't the greatest right now. The risk is too high for the reward in many, many companies. But here, I've never seen anything where the risk-reward was so bad, because here you could risk. When you, when you sell this thing, as AIG learned, and you, see, you would think a lesson should be learned and you shouldn't be pushing this stuff. You could lose really all of your money. I mean, now I don't think an investor is going to lose all their money doing this insurance through Putnam or through AI uh, uh, Alliance. But you could lose 80% of it, 70% of it. And indeed, you've already lost about 30 or 40%. And, and, I, and people don't realize it. They, start, you, you, they go out and tell you, oh, you're getting 6%, 7%, compare it to treasuries. Because you buy an investment grade, because that CDS, for some reason, is investment grade. I think Carl. now it's lost the investment grade uh, rating. So they, they, they're, they're pushing that on that basis, and I really think it's unconscionable. But, but I'm not going to be sanctimonious. I mean, look, I, I, I look for these things. I look, of course. Where so I made all I, my money I is, talk. is looking for that risk-reward thing. That was a great interview with Carl Icahn. So what did we learn from that interview? Three things. First off, Carl believes that this crisis is going to be much worse than the 2008 financial crisis that saw companies like AIG have to get bailed out because they put derivatives on collateralized debt obligations. Second off, Carl is short the CMBX, which is the commercial real estate market. He's bought derivatives basically ensuring that the commercial property market goes down. Lastly, this reminds me a lot of the big short. Michael Burry and his team basically bet against the residential real estate market in 2006, 7, and 8 and profited from it as the financial markets went down throughout 2009, 10, and 11. So you've got that straight from Carl Icahn. Be sure to smash that like button and if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel for other interviews just like this. Thanks for watching this video and remember your decisions today define your tomorrow. Have an amazing day.